never amount to anything. We shall see, brother. Hey, what's going on, YouTubers? This is Zen from Zen World, and I hope you're having a great day. So today on Powers Discuss, we are doing an anime um, character, and his name is Tetsuyo, and he's from the Akira uh, manga and movie. Now, a lot of you, Akira came out in the late 80s. Now, that movie was ahead of its time. Now, I'm not going to get into the whole story and synopsis of it, but basically, it's about a, it's, well, it's about a couple of characters, right? Um. Uh, but we're talking about Tetsuyo, and he's a character who was basically experimented on on a governmental scale, right? To to really escalate his uh, latent ability. But what happened in the movie is that his powers evolved so fast that he had a hard time controlling it. Now, getting into the powers itself, what are his are his powers? Now, they're pretty vast in terms of um, explanation. Now, I know I did mention um, latent psychic abilities, but it's a lot more than that, right? Now, uh, telekinesis is the ability to move or to impress upon an uh, object with your mind, right? When I say impress upon, it's the ability to just kind of move or have some kind of communication with it, right? Now, for him, he's able to, like, just move stuff, push, pull, um, and create uh, some kind of psionic uh, force field, right? Psionic force field meaning that he's able to use the mind to create a barrier itself, right? Pretty cool. What are his other feats? He's also uh, shown the potential to teleport. Now, this alone is a really high-level feat because when you think about teleportation, uh, it's the ability to trans transmute, or not transmute, transport all of your atoms from one location to another location while still having them intact, right? Why is that so important? Because current research that uh, says that teleportation is possible has a really big uh, negative to it. And that negative to it is that when you're able to transport uh, a set of atoms from one location to another, you're actually just cloning, you're, you're dismissing the current atoms or the current state of being from one location, and then you're just recreating them in another location exactly the way it was in that old location, right? So it's kind of like you die to just be rebirthed in a clone type of version, right? So at current state, there isn't a, a quote-unquote teleportation. Now, the reason why this uh, this film is really important is because it leads into a lot of uh, experimentation that has been done in war, especially when you think about uh, uh, what is just experimentation on soldiers in order to see if there is some kind of uh, latent abilities, right? Or monitoring, uh, as they call it in like World War II and experimentation that they've done and put millions of dollars into um, people who seemingly have some kind of precognition, right? So this movie is kind of relevant in terms of uh, where governmental aspects play a part in experimentation to then exploit these abilities, right? But in this sense, uh, Tetsuyo has uh, basically, uh, he's, He's, his abilities have shifted to the point where he no longer can control them, right? Now, there's one point in the in the film where, uh, um, or his best friend, that's what his best friend, rather, because I don't want to butcher the name, his best friend uh, shot his arm, right? Because he's just trying to, he's trying to save his friend, but at the same time, his friend Tetsuya is going crazy. Now, in the sense that he's going, quote unquote, crazy because his powers are are basically um, outliving the body that they're in, meaning that uh, they're evolving so fast that the body or that this bio capsule um, basically can't house his abilities anymore. So he shoots his arm, right? And one of the coolest things is that he has his arm, he basically stops the bleeding. Cool. Uh, it makes sense that his powers can't do that, right? Stop the bleeding. Tele if you're using telekinesis, you could stop the flow of something, right? Because it's uh, you're impressing upon something. Now, he uses um, what I would call um, technokinesis, right? In order to forge a brand new arm. Why is that really important, though, in terms of capabilities and powers? Now, 
when we're talking about telekinesis and telepathy and all the kinesis itself, him being able to bind or reconstruct the arm using metal and wiring and things like that to create a prosthetic is something that we are trying to do, right? But he's able to move it as if it was second nature, right? Meaning that he has the, the neurons and synapses that are con directly connected to move and control it like a regular arm. Now, later on, you do see the arm go a little bit crazy, and then it starts to, like, uh, uh, detach and deform itself, right, on a sitting of where he's, he's placed at a time. But at the same time, it just lends itself to, for you to understand how powerful he really is, right? That psychic abilities and telekinesis are not just moving things, right? And not just uh, being able to read, but they can go into a wild array of creative potential, right? That is showcased in this movie, Akira. Now, you know, in, again, just to do a quick recap of abilities. Now, this is probably one of the highest echelon of abilities that I've seen in any kind of genre when it comes to um, powers of the mind, right? I've seen uh, another relevant uh, ability to this, or not relevant ability, but another relevant person who's shown um, high feats of this type of potential would be like Jean Grey from Marvel Comics, right? But in a sense, it's done in a very creative way that uh, the binding of technology to his arm to create a prosthetic, his ability to teleport, his ability to create psionic um, force fields, and his ability to basically um, read what's happening, right? Um, for the people around them and what they're possibly thinking, and also the ability to just uh, just transmute, right? In in some type of sense, right? One of at one point in the movie, besides the teleportation, his body is again starting to deform, right? It's starting to replicate. It's replicating cells on a really fast rate in order to contain the abilities that he has. But it starts to really deform in a way um, that I'm going to show you a, a quick clip of it. That's that just leads you to believe that if he had full control of over over his body, he, that means he does have the potential to then replicate cells on a molecular level. In a lot in a lot of different ways. Why do I why do I know that from the movie? Because just like the scene that I'm about to show you, he's able to then while he's impressing upon emotion to use this ability, he sends his arm out and then it grows in a in a um, fantastic way, right? That lets you know that he, the psychic ability and control of the mind is actually pretty vast, right? Where he has some form of biokinesis, right? Biokinesis meaning control over the body itself. Anything else that he's shown in the movie? Yeah, he's shown to create force fields where he where he could f um, fly and levitate himself, right? Which is just basically telekinesis and create a force field to then encapsulate oxygen in, in space so that he's not like... Uh, loss of breath right and so that he could breathe so i know i kind of like this this is a complete like <laughs> um rant about his abilities but um tetsuya is pretty powerful right i would encourage anyone to go watch the movie when i was little and i watched that movie it was something that really um i didn't really grasp the grasp the complexity of the movie until i was a little bit older probably in the late 90s right uh watching that movie the first time i did get a little bit of um scares right especially seeing him mutate and his body just kind of uh deform itself because his powers were just too immense for him to contain in in the vessel that he has and that's his body right so um go out watch the movie and of course there's more kinesis than uh telekinesis biokinesis uh technokinesis and then telepathy itself but i just wanted to rant a little bit about it when we're talking about the complexities of powers discussed when it comes to tetsuyo from the akira uh, movie and the manga so with that being said who do you want to see on the next powers discussed video <music>going on youtubers this is zen from zen world and i hope you're having a great day so today on powers discuss we are discussing the powers of mega man yes mega man so uh primarily we're not talking about all of the attributes that he can get but we're talking about the main canon or buster canon that he has and also um 
what that kind of leads into, right? So a lot of it is going to be a, kind of the assumption of what the powers are based on like what we see on the TV show and also in the games in terms of like that um, that blinding light when it's starting to like morph, right? There's a morphing phase and that gets into a little bit of science. So uh, we're not going to get too much into the publication and also the history of Mega Man himself, but we do know that uh, he's based on a video game character of a little boy um, that happens to be in, in synthetic boy and basically dr light is the one who created him and dr wiley who's the po opposing scientist or bad guy kind of uh well he didn't kind of he worked with dr light in terms of uh, technological advances when it comes to robotics right or and uh, one of the things they did is they created some amazing robots together but dr wiley wanted a, a lot more right in terms of um his aspirations for world domination, so to speak, right? So he activated a set of robots or modified a set of robots um, to do the wrong thing. And now on the opposite end, Dr. Light, he decided to, the synthetic boy that he made, uh, they he modified him, right? To be a Avenger of sorts, right? When I say Avenger, to be, uh, to be a robot of peace, right? and foundation to then save people and to help people. But one of the things that he does have is a is a cannon, an arm cannon, right? Now it is um it could go on either arm, but for the most part we usually see Mega Man using it on his left arm, right? And its its functionality is basically well it can move like an arm, but it can also morph, right? It can morph into a cannon. And the cannon is uh basically soaks in solar rays and then condenses it condenses it into a force that uh kind of looks like pellets right in the game it looks like pellets right but they're solar pellets and it could go straight through metal it could go through a whole bunch of a lot of material in terms of like the highest feats that it could go right and later on in the in the game it could charge itself right now there's more to that, right? Of course, there's uh, the charging and then uh, utilization of solar rays and then condensing it into a force, right? Into a concussive force itself. But as you look at the arm, you'll notice that the arm morphs from going back and forth from like regular arms to then like the cannon itself, right? So what's happening, right? So if we were to relate it into um, advances that we're trying to make in current technology, you can already assume that it's a form of nanotechnology, right? Meaning that on a molecular or atomical scale, the atoms, in this case, the mechanical atoms are then forming or reforming into the likeness of what it, what the blueprint is, right? So you'll notice in the Mega Man games, you'll, in the early Mega Man games, you'll see a, the picture of like the blueprints of how he's made in in the sense of the arm cannon, as long as Mega Man absorbs or knows the blueprint, then the nanotechnology that is in him can form into pretty much anything, right? Now, not anything, but anything that is in addition or accessory to his 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 already found his already made foundation and um, blueprints, right? Now, one of the coolest things in the game is that one of his powers, right, is to absorb, right, to absorb the abilities of another. But what that actually means is when he defeats an opponent, he's actually taken on the blueprints and then able to utilize his nanotechnology to then um, take on the form that coincides with his his already structured body, right, which is really amazing when you think about it, right? So anyway, I'm ranting like I always do. But let me know what you think about Mega Man, his powers, or any additions that I missed out, right? I didn't talk about the powers that he takes on, but just the powers that he normally has, which is the, the adaptation phase and also his arm cannon, right? Um, his buster cannon. So with that being said, this is Zen from Zen World saying peace, love, and prosperity. If you enjoy my content, drop me a like, subscribe, share the video with like, like-minded people, and I'll catch you all later for the next video we're doing on Cyclops of the X-Men. Take care.